Hi guys, Keith Com. Today I will be sharing with you a trip that we took last week to the very, very north of Jordan. Dreaming of The Ajloon Forest Reserve is about an hour and a half north of Amman. It's a really beautiful drive though, and you don't really notice how long it takes. Apart from it being a little bit scary at times, um, it is very picturesque the whole way there. So on your way through into the reserve, you will pass the Royal Academy for Nature Conservation, and you'll go up and down little hills until you get to the main reception for the forest reserve. To the left, you've got the car park, and then to the right, you've got the cafe and the restaurant and the gift shop. The reserve has various different hikes that you can take from levels of difficulty to the length of time, but we opted for the very simple option of going round the, the trail around the main site. And as my husband is Jordanian and I have a karma, it came to around maybe five lira to, um, to enter, it wasn't anything at all. So the ranger advised us to go on the shorter trip for about half an hour um, because it would be too difficult to go on the longer one hour trip around the main site with the children. Um, but we said, nah, we're gonna go on the long one. And actually it was very, very easy. Um, and we got around easily with the both children. In fact, Adam was like jumping around like a gazelle the entire time. He had so much fun and Hashem had so much fun too, but we did have to take the carrier. Hava, hava. Hashem? Hava, hava. You definitely can't take a push chair down there. Um, so for a small child like Hashem, you probably wanna take a carrier. The reserve was founded on an Ajloon highlands village called Al Yanabi in 1987, with a mandate to protect the evergreen oak forest ecosystem. It's only about 13 kilometers squared, but accounts for a dense population of endangered species, wild flora, and of course the ancient trees. And the vegetation there is said to hold significance for medicinal local medicines. And there you can find the evergreen oak, pine, carob, wild pistachio and wild strawberry trees, which, you know, sounds as magical as it was. You can also find wild boars, foxes, the stone marten, striped hyena and the crested porcupine. We saw none of those, but we did hear a lot of rustling in the trees and we saw a lot of beautiful birds. As well, in 1988, the roe deer became extinct due to excessive hunting. The RSCN launched a captive breeding program to um, get the roe deer numbers back up and you will find them inside the reserve. And the RSCN launched a captive breeding program and now you can find the roe deer thriving inside the reserve, but again, we didn't see any. The reserve is so important because it protects the endangered habitat and it also provides a really unique space for research to be conducted. Due to the high use of pesticides in farming and deforestation, just to name a couple of reasons, the natural habitat in Jordan is declining. So initiatives like this are really precious. Throughout the site and supposedly in the neighboring villages as well, you can find these kind of scattered archeological ruins. Um, and it, it gives a really strange kind of still sense. And it's honestly, it's really magical. It's really special. Um, and it kind of reminded me of Ireland. It reminds me of what Scotland might be. I've never been to Scotland, but I imagine that the highlands there are kind of like this as well. There's very low trees um, and all of these very interesting rocks and stones and different kinds of algae and different kinds of trees that I've never seen before. It's really beautiful. And supposedly in the spring, the reserve is kind of carpeted in these wild flowers, including drifts of anemones and rock roses. It sounds so beautiful and I really hope, inshallah, next spring I will get the opportunity to go and stay there for a couple of days. But you can actually book the lodges there and stay there. Um, the lodges look really nice and they have beautiful views. And then you've got the opportunity to kind of go on those longer hikes and really get to know the surrounding area. Oh, and they have a zip line as well, which looked epic. It's also worth noting the Royal Academy for the Nature Conservation, which I mentioned earlier on. This academy was founded in 2010 to provide training on nature conservation and sustainable development. It was inaugurated in 2015 by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Hussein, and it is the first centre in the Arab world known for providing training on nature conservation, which I guess is kind of a big deal, and I personally feel quite proud that we've got this in Jordan. Actually, the Academy's also got a restaurant attached to it, and it's got this incredible view of the surrounding valley. Um, we've been there once before, and it was really spectacular and it's somewhere that the locals go as well which is nice so you don't often get that with tourist hotspots. After our short romp around the forest reserve we decided to go to Ajloon Castle. You can see this castle a mile off. It's perched on top of this high high point 
and it can see all across the Jordan Valley and three other wadis. So supposedly Ajnun Castle was built on top of a monastery back in around 1200 by Saladin's nephew and general. Saladin is of course the anglicized way of saying Salah ad -Din, um, and he was the guy who was basically responsible for beating back the Crusaders way back in the 12th century. So like I said, the castle has got this incredible view across the Jordan Valley and across these other valleys. It was a key strategic point in monitoring the traffic that went between Egypt and Damascus, as well as seeing any threats that came to the region. And of course, was a strategic point in the battle against the Crusaders, which occurred at Karak Castle. According to my very reliable resource, Wikipedia, Ajloun was named after a monk that lived there in the Byzant Byzantine, why can't I say this word? Byzantine era. But I have of course learned that Wikipedia is about as reliable as a chocolate teapot. The castle itself inside is pretty beautiful and it's reasonably well maintained. I mean, there's a lot of room for improvement, but you can see the, um, the, the gigantic stone balls that were used in um, their like, what are those things called? Trebuchet, I think. Um, and they were coated in loofah that was then set alight and then it was flung off the castle at the enemies, which is pretty cool. And of course, you've also got the standard um, arrow slits in the sides of the walls as well. And you have a massive trench outside, um, a massive moat outside um, for protection as well. So, you know, when you're looking at it from a kind of like strategic army type perspective, which I don't have, um, it's probably really interesting. There was a really pretty cafe next to the tourist center that's just, just down the road from the castle. Um, and we thought about stopping there for some limunana, but we decided to go to Yahala in Jarash because it is our favorite restaurant. It's a typical kind of restaurant that you have here, which is very family orientated and they've got the mixed grill and they've got all the different meze like hummus and rocket salad and mtabal and all of these yummy things. And the food is really good. But what makes it really special is that they've got these different dining areas and they've also got like different water features throughout the entire restaurant and ducks like going in and out and they can like walk between your feet and things which i don't know if you'd get away with in england but i really like it it's really and they've got a sheltered playground as well so it's really good for the kids that was our day out in ajloon and jerash i hope to go to dabin nature reserve next because i've heard that that's spectacular as well so I know that a lot of people are interested in hearing about Jordan's reserves and inshallah if the weather permits us to and the lockdowns permit us to, we will go on some more adventures soon. So recommendations would be great and um, yeah, that's it for this week. Ma'asalama.